Hey guys, Mike Bland, SAS Global Investigations. Um, some of the events lately, like the Brian Koberger, Idaho killer case, and a lot of other ones through history uh, have, uh, you know, spurred these questions with people on what exactly are the traits of a serial killer or someone who's about to become one or in the making or just fits that profile. And I think something that uh, is an interesting, you know, topic. So I have compiled a comprehensive list of some of these traits. Um, had to write these down because it is uh, a long list and there's actually even more than this out there. So some of those are smooth talking, but not sincere. Uh, egocentric and grandiose. No remorse or guilt. No empathy. Deceitful, manipulative personality. Shallow emotions and very impulsive. Uh, poor behavior controls. Uh, need for excitement. Lack of responsibility. Early behavioral problems, uh, maybe stemming back to childhood. Adult antisocial behavior. Uh, many of the serial killers that have been interviewed over the years had suffered some type of severe head trauma. Uh, many were sexually or physically assaulted or abused, raped by their parents or mother. And I'll circle back to the mother topic late, later on. Uh, they often have some type of facial deformity <clears throat> they, they were born with, or maybe even could have suffered as an injury, perhaps. Uh, extremely OCD, the type of people that uh, are like the cleanest of the clean freaks, you know, where you move something in their house and then they literally come and ask you like, you know, did you just move the remote on the table because it's moved? I normally keep it over here. And they're like, it's this big deal all of a sudden. Or like the uh, John Douglas that did the profile of the, when they were looking for the Unabomber and they and he said, the guy you're going to be looking for is going to have like his tools and his shop will literally be on the counter. And like where the hammer goes, it will literally be outlined in black paint or something outlining where that tool goes in that spot. So that level, that's the level of OCD we're talking there. An extremely high IQ, a very charismatic, um, and persuasive, uh, just how um, Ted Bundy acted as a police officer, said he was off duty, showed women a badge, and and then talked them into getting into his vehicle um, willingly. Um, you know, so, you know, I, you know, it's like these people, they're extremely crazy, but they're not dumb. That could be a very high achiever, overachiever. That could be a lawyer. That could be a doctor, a judge, CEO, or exec. Someone that is, uh, again, very uh, ambitious, um, very intelligent, and um, you know, not someone who's a guy just sitting on the couch. Uh, to clear up that too, anytime you are doing profiles on anything, whether it's someone that's a drug trafficker, a murderer, a terrorist. It's, it's, it's important to keep in mind, you don't always have, everybody's not going to always fit the same exact profiles. You could have a homeless guy that becomes a serial killer. You could have a guy who's a, a, a lawyer like Ted Bundy. So I think it gets more into sometimes the personality traits, you know, their position in life, their title. It's not going to always be this cookie cutter uh, one all for everyone. Uh, you know, one-off version for just every person is going to fit. Another important thing people get confused on people, a lot of people have a lot of these traits where people get confused on this and get this twisted around is they're like, well, so I'm this way. Are you saying I'm a serial killer or my son's this way? Or my dad sounds like this. No, again, it's just like when you're learning kinesiology, interviewing, interrogation, body language, and there's signs of deception and lying and nervousness. Some people display those. It's even been proven that some people from different cultures display different types of those signs. It's again, it's an overall picture of the scenario you're dealing with. Overall circumstances, you know, say out of a hundred of those signs, is the person committing 99 of these? Are they committing 50? Are they acting three of these? Um, and that's where sometimes in that case, 
you know, direct questions come into play. You know, why are you nervous? And the person says, well, you know, I'm talking to the police right now. So then you have to discern, does that sound like a logical thing or not? So, so I wanted to delve into that there really quickly and explain that, that these are not all for certain things. These are, uh, you know, through FBI statistics, hundreds of interviews, hundreds of killers interviewed. These are ones that are pretty surefire ways to tell if you're a guy dating a woman, college girl dating a guy, you get a bad vibe, they're displaying a lot of these characteristics. You know, that's the thing where you then start to become a little more concerned or a lot more concerned, depending again on all the circumstances. So, um, kills or mutilates pets as a child. That's kind of like the person when they you hear about that, they start warming up to killing people. They've uh, sometimes killed uh, people, um, you know, before that. But the other thing is uh, back on the women topic are the moms of the serial killers. If for a lot of the guys like Ted Bundy and a lot of these guys that were sexually abused or raped by their mothers, um, it, you know, creates this trauma they have. And uh, not all people are very strong and able to deal with that and come out on top of that. Instead, I guess it's all internalized, basically, and they then act this out with this rage and this vengeance upon women. And it's you always see where they're targeting, you know, a woman that's like five, six, uh, blue eyes, brunette, 135 pounds, whatever, long, black, straight hair or something like that. And they all, these women, they'll all end up looking the same. These victims, it's because the woman looks like the serial killer's mother, reminds him of his mother. So he's exerting this dominance and this power because, you know, he was helpless when he was little and those things happened to him. So uh, it's very interesting, um, you know, what how it, uh, it affects these people psychologically. But um, it's about them. And then a lot of times, too, serial killers will, in fact, they know they're sick or there's, they have problems, something's wrong. They actually want to get caught like the Zodiac. They'll leave they'll leave breadcrumbs, trails, clues, signs maybe taunting the police, but these people psychologically, they want to get caught, whether it's subconscious or conscious. Uh, I, I think I, I, I would say it's obviously turns into more conscious thinking, especially when they're leaving clues intentionally because that is evidence. Uh, everyone knows that from an investigative standpoint, leaving anything behind is evidence in any shape or form. So them leaving letters, leaving ciphers, leaving telltale signs um, that they're the one committing the crime every time, like using a knife on every murder or a gun or, or whatever, or a strangulation tactic that basically a same MO every time. That's clearly showing that it's the same person also. So again, if anybody has any questions, wants clarification on some of these, um, very interesting topic. I want to get that out there for people to educate people and inform them, which is our entire business model on on things like that things that could also save your life and protect you as well it's very important information to just keep as a feather in your hat um when meeting someone and you start seeing uh, again with your your gut something's wrong you start seeing some of these major major uh things that just are unsettling to you so you need to listen to your gut on those guys all right stay safe